can't even look at a piece of African art. It disturbs them. You know why? Because there's a force in it. There's a power in it. How they do it, that's the next secret. That's what I'm working on today. He's considered the father of Belizean sculpture and his masterpiece, the Sleeping Giant, was even chosen as the watermark for the local currency. But now the dust from the wood George Gab has loved since he was old enough to hold a knife and a chisel is affecting his sinuses to such an extent he can no longer carve. Rather than be beaten, this man, who also writes and paints, has been inspired in a new direction. Today on Carib Nation Television, George Gab shares his work and his new mission with Carib Nation's David Hines. In celebration of its 15th anniversary, the Cultural Academy for Excellence, a nonprofit arts and education program, will host a benefit concert on Saturday, June 11th at 4 p.m. at the Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center on the University of Maryland's College Park campus. The family-friendly concert will feature the jazz, hip-hop, and Caribbean sounds of guest artists Etienne Charles, Jacques Schwartz-Bart, Chris Styles Bacon, and Orlando Cotto, along with the award-winning Positive Vibrations Youth Steel Orchestra. Tickets online at clarissemithcenter.umd.edu. For additional information, go to www.cafeyouth.org. This is Carib Nation TV, the only television show that takes you to the heart of the stories that keep the Caribbean talking and America listening. It's political, it's cultural, it's controversial. Come join us. Well, I'm here in the studios of Mr. George Gab, the premier artist here in Belize, in Belize City. Mr. George Gab, nice welcome to Carib Nation. Nice well, um, since uh, we've got here, we found out that you... I can tell that you have traveled the journey. <laughs> um, how did you get started in all of this? I, I think it's because of uh, the, my condition that I, uh, the environment that I grew up in. As a young man, I, I, when I say young man, at the age of 13, there were, there's where, where my education stopped. I had to find something to do. And in those days, because I'm 75 now, in those days it was difficult to get a job if you don't have a college education. So I, I decided to do something with my hands. And I started to take bits of things and put them together um, to occupy my mind. And um, I didn't want it to be an artist. I just want to find something to do to survive. And so that's how I really started. And, and of course, that, that, that feeds into the whole mm. concept that um, one doesn't choose to be an artist. Exactly. And one is born an artist. Exactly. And, and that artistic talent evolves, yes, if yes. you will. Uh, you, you, you're very, very philosophical. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm t I was talking to you a little yeah. bit before we um, came on camera. Yes. And you have um, a piece of work in Belmopan, the, yes. the, the capital city of Belize, yes. and it's called what? Freedom of Thought. Why? Oh, well, I, I say that um, use all borrowed thoughts as springboards to move forward, and not as springboard, not as millstones around your neck move forward. And I, I, I designed a thing many years ago and I decided to do it at Belmopan. It's very simple. Straight lines. Everything is straight lines. Moving forward fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. As if someone in your country 
to move forward. Everyone. Hmm? everyone. I saw that your art speaks to people. Universal. The thought is universal. Mm -hmm. It's not only for Belize. Uh -huh. Freedom of thought. Use all, all teachings, past teachings, as springboards to move you, not as millstones around your neck. Around your neck. <laughs> you know, lots of people always want to get into the heads, get into the heads of artists <laughs> to figure out what, 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 what makes you tick. How do you create, to, to, to bring to life the creative process? Um, take yeah. us inside a little and tell uh, us. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, it, it could be a long story, but I have a word, love. I want to do love. I did love. But I don't want to do someone, or prayer. prayer. Prayer was the first one, excuse me. I don't want to do someone kneeling down like that. That's a person kneeling down. I wanted to do prayer. What is prayer? So I am writing all these things. Prayer is making connection with somebody bigger than man. Call him God, call him what you want. He who stays hidden and oftentimes tell us what to say. And when you make contact, you are not in, you're halfway in a physical world and halfway in a spiritual world. And then you feel different because of your state of condition. Mm -hmm. I finally end up with a movement that did this. something turning over inside of you and then release. Ah. See? And I did that sculpture. That sculpture won me a scholarship to, in, to England called, you know, mm -hmm. called prayer. So, so that, that it might sound, sound strange, but it isn't. It's just like an athlete getting ready to go and, and maybe play a game of tennis. If he is in a good state of mind, physically and mentally, uh, he will perform well. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with an artist. Mm -hmm. If an artist is spiritually ready and physically ready, he'll do a good job. And so it's that synthesis between the spiritual and the physical. Exactly. I will show that to you in a little while mm -hmm. with a piece of sculpture right over here. Uh -huh. Because today, day, what I try to do is to infuse into my pieces a spirit form that gives it a f form of life, African art, mm -hmm. Mayan art, Egyptian. The rest of the arts in the world are good, but take African art particularly, and, uh, and Mayan art. You take a piece of it and hold it in your hand. The dimension and the proportions are not perfect. But there's something in it that say, hey, look at me. There are some people who can't even look at a piece of African art. It disturbs them. You know why? Because there's a force in it. There's a power in it. How they do it. That's the next secret. That's what I'm working on today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> tell me something about um, the kind of work you've been doing in terms of preparing. So let's say you're preparing to do a piece of sculpting. Mm -hmm. You write your thoughts down. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell, tell I get the that. subject first. Uh -huh. I get the subject and then I start writing. Okay. This will, this will only take three minutes. Uh -huh. Go right there. Right. Take your time. Usually I write about what I want to do. Mm -hmm. before I, I, get a, I get a theme or, and then I write about it. And I've been successful with that. But this particular piece of sculpture I was going to do, I didn't write about it. But it was in my mind. And I say, hey, I am going to do this piece of sculpture for you. Remember, I have no teacher. Mm -hmm. And this thing was good for me because I'm speaking to he who stays hidden. I am saying, hey, I'm going to do this for you. Isn't there a person that I can give it to? But spiritually, in my mind, I, I am going to do this piece of work as if I'm doing it for you. Call him God, call him what you want. But the person. 
And when I got about two thirds of the way, suddenly I had to leave it. I felt myself being carved as I carved. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so I go inside. See, I have to write now. All the arts are combined. I said, I speak not with the voice of make-believe, nor with the art of forming words to bring about some fancy thoughts, nor to make some rhythmic sound, or to please a lover's quest, even not to answer king's command, but rather to open one's heart and mind and let thoughts fly in a sky of truth that man and angels may hear my song. I think, I see, I feel, I have found another part of him in me. He smiles as I leave myself free to fashion. His gentle touch explodes only to release, fearful, trembling, wanting. I leave myself to yield complete, fleeting moments of immeasurable suffering particles of ecstasy le leaking from the seams of time, a messenger of truth, a haunting voice beyond existence echoes to my heart. Take shape, make shape, there is no time. Be a ripple in the sea of eternity, for in time there is none, only on the shores of infinity where blessed souls bathe themselves with countless shapes of sculptured water and quench their thirst with the gladness of your coming. And ye, to find the echo that once lived in my heart, now lives in my voice, singing, shouting on that same seashore. Take shape, make shape, time is no more. Beautiful poetry. That's the one I won in, in Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C. Yes, I, and I didn't sit to write it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It just came just like what I'm telling you. Yeah. Because I was so involved with my sculpture, I was being sculpted. I felt myself being sculpted spiritually. And so you must express yourself. So I had to, I had to, I had to do it. Uh -huh. It had to come out. The poetry with the sculpture had to come out. Ah, it's an <laughs> interesting concept. Yeah. Poetry and sculpture. <laughs> Yep, yes, 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 yes poetry. Yes, yes. Where, where this deep spiritualism comes from? Um, it's here, ah. right here. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Do you, speak, do you speak to your ancestors? It, it's everywhere. Uh -huh. It's everywhere. It's a consciousness. It's, you see, you know, some, some artists, some artists like to say, um, George, boy, I can't do nothing. I'm dried up. I can't create. I don't know. I dry up. I'm not clicking. I'm not. I said, man, you're not spiritually ready. That's mm -hmm. all you need. That's all you need. Get spiritually ready and it will come. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is spiritual. Look. Creator, creation. The greatest art, artist is the creator because he creates everything. Mm -hmm. What you can see and what you can't see. So when you create, you are, kind, you are in tune with him. I did some work in Tennessee. And uh, the early kids, I taught to the same post process. And all the pieces of work that they did, 35 pieces, every one was different. And it's the same subject. And all of them had a different shape. And you know what came to me as I look at them? Provoke and let flow our inner senses, the chance to dance with ecstasy, where all worldly emotion look and listen with envy and God smiles in rhythm to the beat of creativity. So you're a teacher? Yes, you see. Uh -huh. That's what they say? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, oh, yes, I taught in the States a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I taught because my philosophy is different from anything academic. Uh -huh. My way of, of, of approaching creativity. The particle of the urge to create is born in every human, but is stifled by the pressures of a so-called developed society. Uh -huh. It's in you, it's in the gentleman, it's in the lady, it's, but by an inspiring book, sometimes a religion, it, 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 it revitalizes you. Mm -hmm. Your self-thought, of course. Well, yes and no, because what do I know that somebody hasn't 
said before. Uh huh. Uh huh. You but, know, but so, when you say it, it becomes uh, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because, mm -hmm. well, to say that I did not go to a school, right, to learn art, uh -huh. I did not. Right. I did not go to a school to learn to use the tools. I did not. Mm -hmm. I had to do everything my way, which I don't regret. Not encouraging anybody not to go to school, you know, but I don't regret it for myself. Maybe I would have been further if I did go to school, but um, I don't regret not going to school because I have left a portion of myself to find out the truth myself, to stand up to the truth myself. Yes. You see? Yes. But yet you, you yourself recognize the importance of school yeah. because oh, yes. you teach. Oh, yes, yeah, exactly. Right, 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 right. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about um, the kind of work you've been doing here in Belize and the response to that kind of work. Um, how, how do people respond to this thing called art, this little piece of wood or this little piece of whatever that you carve? How do people respond to ordinary people? Now, I could tell you how they respond to craft work, uh -huh. but not art. Not art. Okay. Okay. Art uh, you make a distinction. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Go ahead. Because <laughs> they will always have, um, you know, people's own, own concept of what is art, and you, you get into some little arguments at time. but um, everybody is free to think what they, how they feel. I don't, I don't, a person could be an exceptionally good painter, but to me he's not an artist. There's no spirit in there. Oh, so the art must have the spirit. Yeah, it must have the spirit. Ah, uh, If it doesn't have the spirit, he's not an artist. And a, and a good painter alone is not an artist. A, a good, an artist will use his artistic skill in any field. No, not boasting, not boasting, please, please. I have built boats without having a, t a teacher, designed them, sailed them in the Grand Clas Classic out here, and won the races. I have made paddles and canoes and won races. I take the artistic talent and you could put it into different things and make it work. It's the artistry within you. A different thing. Some people say it's a madness. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it's a gift. It's a gift. Your idea is, a, is um, And you find that people yeah. have a difficult time responding to the real, yeah, yeah. profound art. Yeah. But some people, yeah, what they, they, they like, you know, they, they like a, a, a lovely piece of uh, Zericote wood, which is an exotic wood in this country, made into a bird or a boat sailing, which is nice. And they, they, they tend to see that more. Mm -hmm. And they more and more enjoy it. It's not like this fellow over here. Right. right. That fellow is uh, before you go, I'll let you stand up and look at him and you you'll start to look at art in a different way mm -hmm. after that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so 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 your philosophy you know there's a poet from Guyana called Martin Carter. He said, I write not um, for the living, I write for the unborn and for the dead. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to that? Yeah, man. He write not for the living, mm -hmm. but he writes for the for the unborn, unborn and the dead, and the dead. Mm -hmm. Children to come and those who have passed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that. Yes, yes, yes. And mm -hmm. I think somewhere, yeah. uh, somewhere in, yeah. in your work, there is some resonance mm -hmm. in that kind of philosophical outlook. Um, how has the um, government here in Belize um, been responding to art and so on? Well, uh, the, never before. I think the, the, the let's let's take the real good painters are not here today. They're dead. Mm. Maybe that's what this guy was referring to. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. to those. Yes. Um, the good actors on stage, the gone. It's it's not getting better. It's, it's going down, but it will come up back. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think this prime minister that we have, I feel it. 
I feel that this friend, his son is fostering art. He has an image factory. Yes. He, yeah. he, he teaches art. Mm -hmm. In other words, he, he, yeah, he fosters art. He teaches art. Um, but he's, he's in the tracks of too much on the things that were taught to him in school. Mm -hmm. he, his original self is not there. Individual is not there. Um, but this prime minister that we have in, he'll do something about it. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Why are young people not flocking into art? They used to. They, if I show you downstairs in the, in the, in the restaurant there, I have a photograph about 25 or 30 of us with young people. <clears throat> I started it. <coughs> there was a time, excuse me, when I had a shop on Albert Street and I had drums. We made our drums like these. Okay. And we beat the drums to call in the tourists. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, you come in the shop. There's mm -hmm. tools, <clears throat> there's material, and you're going to work. You don't know nothing, but I'm going to teach you. Mm -hmm. What will you make? Mm -hmm. You will sell. Mm -hmm. the, the money we get from it, you take half of it, who is learning. Mm -hmm. The other half goes back into the shop to buy material and pay help to pay rent and what. So in other words... I was paying them to teach them. Yes. Uh -huh. And that's how it flourished. Today, no, every man is for himself. It's different. They don't see it that way. Commercialization has stepped in. Then what happened is that they, they have a, a big place, what they call it now? Tourist something or a art factory or art something. But with all, you know, organization and this and that, <coughs> but they monopolize on it. <coughs> they would buy all these sculptures from the from the young young workers at a very small price and triple the price, make all the money and the workers make nothing really. Mm -hmm. They are always struggling and they these guys are these guys up top here making all the money. Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. The artist the artist has to eat, doesn't he? Exactly. Or she? Have to yeah, eat. Have yeah, to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you able to, to in a certain sense, marry the two, the economic, mm -hmm. Hmm, and the art. Myself. Yes. Oh well, I, well. <laughs> they call me nuts. I tell you why. Uh -huh. I have to. Give, I have to give you little stories. Yes. Uh -huh. One time at the same shop, I made a head like that out of rosewood, beautiful piece of road, rosewood. An Olmec, Olmec head. And here I know, nothing been selling the whole week. An American came in, look at the head, said, I like that head, oh, I like that head. I gave you $400 for it. At that time, $400. Mm -hmm. I said, no. I said, what? I said, no. He said, I give you five. I said, no. <coughs> Excuse me. So he goes through the door. The boy said, man, he said, George, what you done? $500, you would have money. You would have had money. You could lend us some and all of that. He said, I said, why did you sell it to him? I said, I, I don't know. I myself, to tell you the truth, I don't know why I told all that man no. Oh, that was sad. That was the Friday. The Saturday, the man came back. And he came up in a taxi. And he said, all right, there you are. And he count out seven hundred dollars. That's it. That's all the money I got. I want the head. You know, I told the man no. Told the man no. No. Man got money and got getting his stock pin. Went to the airport. The boy said, "No, oh, they jump on me. No, you crazy." You are getting almost twice the price of that, for that thing and you wouldn't sell it and we need the money, why didn't you? I said, I don't know. The Monday, an American friend of mine, a little short guy came in. Bob Novak, he looked, he came in as a side, he looked at it, he said, my gosh, I love that. 
I said, you really love that? He said, yes. I said, you can have it. He said, you don't mean it? I said, yeah, take it. Take it. You mean it? I said, yes. He goes up the road and he gets a taxi and he comes back, gets some blankets and he wrap it up and off he went to it. No, the guys say, Mr. George is crazy for true. <laughs> he is crazy. <laughs> One week later, Robert came back and he brought an envelope. And he knew it was my birthday because he, he and I was kind of friends, you know. Yes. He used to work in the shop, though. Uh -huh. <coughs> and in the envelope was a card and 1,000 US dollars. So I got $2,000 belief for it. I said, no. When the boys, I showed the boys, I said, look here. They said, you crazy? I said, no, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a long story, but show you how I get along. Mm -hmm. I do some odd things, and they work out. It's not the money that matters. No, the money that matters. Mm -hmm. I have worked in the States. I have taught in schools in Chattanooga, Tennessee for over oh, 11 years. Every fall, I go up there and teach for four months. And when I come back, all the money I get, I come. That's why I built this place. Mm -hmm. And I had a big studio downstairs to work to teach, but they don't want they don't want to learn the kind of art that I was teaching now. Mm -hmm. But I am well received abroad, well paid abroad, mm -hmm. well paid. Man who's remained true to the art, man mm -hmm. who says art comes from spirit. Yes, exactly, Mr. George yeah. Gab. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking with you too.